Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for joining us, especially on a rainy, a rainy day. Um, I would love to pray, and then I'm going to share just a few brief overarching words, and then praise God uh, that Nancy Gordon is here, uh, who will be sharing a bit more uh, of the details. As you know, Nancy Gordon uh, rotated off as junior warden in, was it March? Yes, March or April, March or April. And uh, this is my sneaky way of keeping her, of keeping her close, is having Nancy's amazing help with, with all of this. Elizabeth Scott has also been really helpful with this process. You may know Elizabeth Scott, Bruce Scott's our wonderful, now with Jesus, Bruce Scott's daughter-in-law. Um, Daria Brown on our staff is very helpful. Hugo, our director of facilities, very helpful. Um, let me pray for us, and then we'll, we'll dive in. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for the rain. Thank you for a church family to come and have dinner with. And Lord, we, uh, we thank you for this sacred place. Thank you, God, as we sit in this room for uh, 65 years in this room of faithful worship, um, gospel, proclamation, prayer, um, joys, sorrows, everything in between. And uh, Lord, thank you for those who've gone before, those who will come after us. And uh, Lord, thank you for your presence here with us now by your spirit. Please guide this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, the sanctuary we're sitting in right now was completed in 1959. The first service held in this room was on Palm Sunday, 1959. Raise your hand if you were worshiping here. Uh, uh, Here's a couple pictures uh, we've got. This, it's hard to see. Again, the lighting in here is sometimes difficult. Uh, and it might be warming up. Sometimes our, our, our uh, projectors kind of fall asleep. But if you have good eyes, you can see a little Coke machine there in the bottom left corner. Um, this is before the steeple was put on. Um, here you can see the steeple in the bottom right corner about to be hoisted up. Looks like there is some hoisting happening in that shot. So that's circa 1958, 1959. And then this was uh, the sanctuary when it had been completed. No transepts, no big ramp to your right, no glass walkway to your left. Uh, just a beautiful, beautiful building. And as you can see uh, in this interior shot, this is what it would have looked like. Um, this was from 1959 to the mid-80s when these transepts were added. Um, you can see the floor, as best we can tell, was wood. Uh, the platform area was a wooden platform. The choir and the organ was in the balcony. Then in the, one last shot of the room before the transepts were added. This is sort of the back in the prayer and praise days when the charismatic renewal was beginning to sweep through Truro and out of Truro. So right about where I'm standing with the guitar is John Howe. Uh, to his left, one of you might know who the guy on the left is. Priscilla Eustace, I'm pretty sure, is in that picture. Then in the 80s, uh, the transepts were added. And this was a Friday night prayer and praise uh, back in the day. Praise God for the legacy. Uh, I, back in the days when we were live streaming to an empty room, you could still feel the deposit, you know, the spiritual kind of deposit that was left in here. So you'll see that's when they went to the red carpet. And I have spoken to a member of the church who was here uh, when that red carpet was put in. Um, Lots of holy moments in this room, sacred moments. Um, not the, maybe the most sacred moment of all was on August 26, 2006, when Jamie and Catherine Brown, uh, <laughs> right here. <laughs> That's when the angels sang the loudest, and I'm sure. Um, so, 1959, 65 years of, uh, of worship in this Space, praise God. And as I shared with you uh, at our annual meeting on March 10th, um, 
we believe that this room ha is now in need of renewal. Uh, if you look at the flooring, the pews you're sitting in, it's hard to fix your eye on a really a square foot of this room and then not notice, oh yeah, that could, that could use some help. Um, and so the reason why I started where I started was so that you know what's undergirding this is a love, um, just a love for this room and for God's work in this room and for the holiness and the sacredness of this place and the kind of the precious privilege we feel to be stewards of this room. So yes, this room is in need of renewal and rejuvenation. And the elephant in the room that um, I just want to address and I'll wrap up pretty soon is, well, Jamie, this room is ours, we know, at least for another 14 years. Um, but it's not 1,000% certain it's ours after that. So I want you to hear from me and from the leadership of the church uh, our absolute conviction that the Lord is going to have us worshiping here for generations to come. Um, the, the how and the details are not yet worked out. Keep praying. But even if... <laughs> Even if I come to you in, in years from now and say, well, we really heard the Lord wrong on that, we're still going to be worshiping in this room for 13 or 14 more years. And uh, it's sort of that conundrum that comes before a couple who knows in 14 years they might sell their house, but it's really time to fix their kitchen. Or it's really time to fix their living room. And they think, well, if we could do this now and enjoy the fruits of that for 15 more years or 14 more years, rather than do it at the very end and then the new couple, the new family can enjoy it. I don't believe that's the case. I believe God is going to have us here for generations to come. And so it's time for that reason. But even if we are just here for another 10, 13, 14, 15 years, I believe it's also time. Last thing I'll say before I hand it to Nancy is a word of incredible thankfulness to you all and to those who aren't, aren't here who have given so sacrificially to this vision. As of today, the Truro congregation has given $98,000 towards sanctuary renewal. Uh, the 2024 budget includes an additional $60,000. So thank you, each one of you. I don't know who gives. I don't know who gives what. So when you see me on a Sunday morning and I'm shaking your hand and I'm saying thank you, it's not because in the back of my mind I know that you've, <laughs> you've get, I don't know who gives or who gives what. I don't want to know. Because uh, then I'll just be asking you, what's your favorite song? Want me to do that this coming Sunday? Um, so whoever you are, who, thank you. Praise God for you. On that note, praise God for you, Nancy. You have already spent countless hours on, on this, going through every element of this room and receiving at least three different bids, I believe. So I'm going to hand it over to you. We don't really have a script. We're going to share some things and then take questions, and then we'll pray. So over to you. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? Yeah. Jamie just said the trick with the mic is to keep it really close. So if, if, if um, it's not close enough, just... Give me a thumbs up or something so I know to, to crank it up a little bit. Um, I, I thought about starting this way, and I think I'll do it. Do you want the good news or the bad news first? Let's go with the good news. The good news is that in the process of getting bids and talking to various contractors, we decided to have... Um, the flooring tested to see if we had any asbestos. And it was our little unsung Easter miracle that it came back that there is no asbestos in the flooring or the, under the mastic or the tile, it's not there. And we tested in four areas. We tested um, the tile that's under the pews in the center of the sanctuary. We tested uh, the mastic that was under the carpet and then we also tested uh, somewhere up in the balcony and somewhere in a transept. And so that was really good news because um, one of the critical components to this project was being able to move the pews. 
And if there was asbestos under the floor, that just added a whole layer of things that either became really expensive for building a scaffolding, or it became uh, just prohibitive uh, in terms of putting down new flooring under the pews. So um, praise God for that. Uh, I was really glad because I had heard a couple of times, oh yeah, there's asbestos. And I finally asked, have we actually had it tested? And the answer was, well, no, but we're sure it is because it's in other parts of the building. And so I said, well, let's just get a company in here to test it. And so that was really good news because in one of the bids for painting, um, in order to reach this vaulted ceiling and also the area um, behind the choir, uh, they were going to have to build a, you know, kind of a wood and metal scaffolding, and that alone was going to cost $60,000. That was the lowest bid on building the scaffolding. So now that we don't need that, they're able, and by the way, um, the door height is just perfect to bring in a scissors scaffold, and that will reach everything except for this area back here because we can't put it, um, the flooring here is not weight bearing, so we can't put that heavy machinery up here. So there may have to be some little scaffolding built to paint this area, but the rest of it can be done by this mechanical scissor scaffold. So praise God for that. Um, Jamie's right. I have met with probably all together about a dozen different contractors, um, mostly based on either people I knew or recommendations from other people. I am a real estate agent and have been for almost 20 years. So I do have some people in my back pocket that I could go to and at least ask the question. And in terms of the painting, both Hugo and I reached out to, um, he reached out to one specific painter that he knew, and I reached out to one that I knew and trusted, and they both came back and said, no, we can't do it, this is too big a job. Um, they just didn't have the, the manpower, the crew, or the, the ability to, to tackle a job like this. Um, so let's go back to the floor because we all know that it was installed around 1981, 83, so it is at least 40 years old, the carpeting and the tile that's under the pews. And um, as I've gotten bids, we do have, by the way, uh, the samples are still up there. We do have a couple of samples. We haven't decided on anything yet, but just in terms of looking at products, we've got three or four samples of um, a luxury vinyl that would go maybe under the pews and then uh, kind of a, a resin tile that's really thick and a nice product that could go out in the narthex or somewhere else. Um, but the flooring, to, in order to get this all done, we're gonna have to work on half of the sanctuary at one time. And so the way this process would work is the first thing that happens is painting. Because the last thing you wanna have happen is have the flooring put in and then a painter comes in and somebody dumps a bucket and then you've got a mess on the floor. So the first thing that would happen is um, the, let's say half of the pews would be taken up and moved over to some space. Uh, and then this half of the room would get painted and then you just flip it and do the reverse. Um, so that's kind of the first step in the process and then there are lots of little details to that. So um, if you're thinking about how the process works from start to finish, the very last thing that would happen in this line of, of um, projects is lighting. So we'd start with painting, then probably have the floors uh, installed. The painting gets a little bit complicated because the pews also need to be painted. And if you just look at the detail on any pew, you've got hymn racks and um, a different type of wood on the top that's gonna need to be refinished. And I will say, um, the, the top part of the pews 
in the main floor are not in great shape. The balcony and the tra uh, transepts are in better condition, so maybe we don't have to do all of those, but I think we've got to count a, a bid for 42 pews um, for the, to, um, and that was just to refinish the top part. We've got to get another bid for actually painting the pews. Um, I feel like I'm jumping around, but I hope you're able to follow me. Um, so the flooring would be the next part of the process. Uh, after that, probably what we do is have the cleaning of these air diffusers that are above our heads. And I had to laugh a few Sundays ago when you were doing baptisms and the baby looked up and you said, oh no, don't look up. <laughs> I thought, oh, I hope paint doesn't fall on his head because we do have a lot of stuff peeling off of this one especially. Um, so th th those would get cleaned. Um, we are hoping, uh, before any of this stuff starts, we are hoping to do a little bit of construction, and this is just a dream, that we would be able to remove at least one of the closets out in the narthex and open that area up a little bit. Um, it's a construction project that our ho I'm hoping we can handle in-house and not have to farm that out to a contractor. We do have some talented people in the parish, so fingers crossed on that. And then also, um, just to tweak a little bit of the wood that's up here where Jamie sits, there's a funky kind of desk back there that doesn't need to be there. We could open this area up a little bit, um, remove part of the knee wall over here, and then we've had multiple requests from the LEMS who handle communion on Sunday to could we please install a railing so that they don't trip and fall down with the host and everything flying in the air. Um, so we're hoping that once that part of the construction is done here, that we could install a couple of handrails, nicely done, symmetrically done on either side. Um, I know one of the top requests, if I had a top I wouldn't even say top 10, this is in the top three, are for pew cushions. And um, my husband and I attended a funeral at a newly built church in Burke on Saturday, and it was a Catholic church, and we were time to pray, and we pulled the kneeler down, and we both looked at each other and went, oh, this is so comfortable. <laughs> was a nice thick kneeler, brand new, and I just was like, we need to replace those kneelers. So the pew cushions and kneelers are the company that does that. That's kind of a package deal. And there's one price for the pew cushions and another price for the kneelers. Um, so let me see if I've kind of, what about this? Well, I, one thing we had thought about, Nancy, since we're sitting in this space is kind of going oh. ground up right. and, and helping you visualize what, uh, what we're imagining. Uh, we don't have any conceptual drawings for you yet. There is an image that you and I have both found sort of inspiring from the Anglican Church in Raleigh. Um, would you want me to show that to them or is that premature? Yeah. No, I think that would be helpful. Um, and I just, I wanna preface by saying we are not saying we're gonna recreate this, but it just says an idea. This is, uh, uh, again, the lighting is difficult to see in uh, here. Oh, the projectors fell asleep. Wake up, projectors. Um, no. It. It's coming. Well, that one's on nice and bright. Oh. That one doesn't fall asleep. Don't worry. It, these will wake up in about 18 minutes. Uh, so, okay. There it comes. It's, it's like the old Polaroid pictures you used to take back in the day. Um, so this is a, a one image of an Anglican church that's beautiful, sacred, and... Um, moves away from, I don't want to put words in your mouth, moves away from a bit of the 1980s um, color scheme that this room still has. So if you're sitting in the pews right now, let's talk kind of bottom up and let's go with flooring first and describe what they might see and, and, uh, and then we can put some costs in front of them too. Sure, so let me, let me put some words in your, in your brain to hold on to and this is what I'm thinking is it's gonna look modern it's gonna look fresh, but it's also gonna look relevant to being Anglican. So we're not thinking something wild and crazy, we're thinking 
It needs to look like an Anglican church, and it needs to look like a colonial Anglican church in the city of Fairfax. Um, so uh, flooring, what you might see where there is carpet now, there may be carpet or it may be some sort of a tile product. Um, not, we ha like I said, we haven't dug into the details and selected products yet. Um, pretty sure though, what is under the pews um, will either be a luxury vinyl wood look-alike, um, and it'll, it'll be a nice, durable pro product, uh, because we, we don't want to install something that's just like the bottom rung, the cheapest thing we can buy, and then, you know, five years from now, somebody's gonna say, darn that Nancy Gordon, why did she do this? This is a mess. Because um, I hope to be around five years from now. <laughs> and at Truro. Um, so that's what you might expect to see here. I think what we're hoping to do out in the narthex is something that would be very easy to clean and very durable, not the carpet, uh, probably some sort of a tile or the luxury vinyl product out there as well. Um, we talked about painting. Uh, the idea right now, and you can't really tell from that picture, but it's just a brighter white. It's a cleaner, fresher look. It's not, this has a, the paint that's in here right now, I don't know really what color it was when it was first painted, but it's very yellow um, at the moment. So we're looking at something that's lighter and brighter. That would include the pews and all of the knee walls. Um, and the paint also, um, is, and the, flooring products are up the stairs and into the balcony and down the stairs to the, the bottom of the steps that go into the undercroft. So um, whether or not um, we stop at that bottom step or include that hallway where the bathrooms are, I'm not quite sure. I think one of the bids does include that area. Um, oh yeah. This space up here. So this space um, is kind of a project on its own. What we're hoping to do is to remove all the carpet and to, um, I don't know if the flooring where the choir chairs are now can be refinished. Some of the bids do include refinishing that, but then to install either a hardwood or, or whatever luxury vinyl we have out there on this area and it would be probably a white riser and a wood runner, if that makes sense. Um, and we would, we've talked about keeping the cushions that are here for the kneelers. They need a good professional cleaning, but we're not planning to get rid of those. We're planning to keep those. Um, lighting is, well, let me, let me back up. Uh, if, if you can see, we have them here. There are square, I think they were speakers at one time. Yeah, this was the, those four, how many speakers are there? I think there's six. six. Those, this was the sound system in the 1950s, so just. Um, and they're also in the transepts, mm -hmm. and just so that you know, the um, painting bids do include removing those and patching those, so those will go away. Um, but I guess the next thing, other than cleaning these, these ducks is um, lighting. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, so, so say what? Sound system or lighting? The lighting. Lighting. Yeah, so the lighting system in here, you can see it's, it's been patched together over the decades. Um, the initial lighting, I believe, was along the cove. And we've got a picture here so you can kind of see what's up there in the cove, these fluorescent bars that go along. I'm sorry that the projectors keep falling asleep. Um, that's what goes along the cove up there is fluorescent bars and we would like to replace those with LED bars that would not just be kind of bright white fluorescent a la what might be in your garage um, but would be controllable where during the week or in our worship services it'd just be a beautiful maybe a little bit more what do they call it um, natural light not natural light um, soft tone orange I don't know I can't think of the right word Warm, thank you, thank you. 
Um, but then, you know, twice a year when we do carols by glow stick or something, we could make it. Who knows what we could do <laughs> up there? Red and uh, green flashing lights. Uh, and then the controls uh, for these lights are really high tech. I think George Washington himself installed these. Um, <laughs> So those are the dimmers for the chandeliers which were installed in the 80s. Um, if you've noticed, that back, they're flickering. They are about to die. And uh, we don't know whether we would have uh, replacement chandeliers that are, um, what are these called, sort of candelabra style, or a flatter sort of wagon wheel chandelier or pendant lighting. We'll take recommendations and see some images and see what people recommend. But those are controlled by those dimmer switches. And then the General Electric kind of rotary is what controls the fluorescence and the recessed lighting. Um, it's, and then up in the mid 2000s, these theatrical lights were added that even now I'm having a very hard time seeing your faces. They're um, blinding. And they're ugly and they're the wrong color and they're probably in the wrong position and uh, I think we'd have a choir twice the size of our current choir if those lights weren't, uh, I'm, that's a joke, if they weren't blinding the choir. So here's the incredible mixer board for those lights. I think that was a Radio Shack purchase maybe back in the day when Radio Shack was a thing. Um, so that's our lighting uh, system. So what, what Nancy and I wanted to do is sort of walk you through the, the room and then let you know sort of the costs bit by bit of what we're getting. So we'll just sort of lay it out to you. So flooring. Uh, for everything that's under you and to replace this carpet either with another tile or a carpet and to do the entire platform in a wood or a luxury vinyl and to go up the stairs into the balcony and down the stairs to the undercroft uh, is about $100,000. Um, the pews are in different pieces. So the first component of it is refinishing the pews. And as Nancy said, that could be, we could save there a bit if we don't need to do all the balcony pews and the transept pews, but we've got what? See, I'm blinded by the lights right now. Is that 15K yeah. for finishing? And then the cushions uh, are 33,000. Uh, and then to add the kneelers is an additional, uh, to be very precise, 15.3. And then we have the paint. And Nancy, you've already addressed this, but this is for literally everything. The ceiling, the walls, the pillars, the narthex, the, yeah, everything is an additional 70K. And then the duct cleaning is 7,000 and, and painting. So they'd be cleaned and painted. And our hope is that the rim that's around the outside of the ducts would not need to be a different color. Um, it could be the same color, which would make them look sort of a little less like the Starship Enterprise uh, <laughs> kind of that we have right now. I love this room. Did I mention that I love this room? But they are a little... Um, I can't find the right adjective. Um, what'd you say, Nancy? Ugly. Okay, thank you. Uh, and then the lighting is uh, 100 to 150K, uh, depending on what we do and what the, what the quotes are. So um, that's sort of where we are with the incredible giving you've uh, given. And with what's in our budget, we can begin to take a, um, a very large step towards this. Uh, you could pray for your, uh, your finance committee and your vestry as we consider if there's any additional funds that we could tap into to do this all in one fell swoop. Um, just to be very honest with you, I don't want to be asking for your money for this anymore. Um, I believe that the Turo congregation has given sacrificially and has given what they can give. Uh, there may be some who are here tonight or who might watch this who think, okay, yeah, now that I've heard this laid out, I could give a bit more. So I think where we will get will be where there's about a hundred to hundred fifty thousand dollar gap between what we have on hand, from what you've given, from what's in Truro's budget, from white, what might still come in from a few other givers, and so that's that's an area where you could pray for uh, for me and for the penance committee, the vestry, as we think about well. Um, do we either adjust our expectations down and take this in phases, or do we perhaps, um, you know, discuss as a finance committee and investor what else, where else we could tap into some funds? Uh, we'll take questions in a minute, but you want to say something else? Yeah, just uh, one thing. We had talked about removing that closet out in the narthex, at least one of them, and maybe doing some adjustments up here. We are hoping that that would cost um, just for supplies only, 
and that our talented uh, workers here, either Hugo and a team, would be able to do that at virtually no cost to us. So we are trying to save where we can, but you know, at the end of the day, um, I used to have a, a meme that was on my real estate website and said, said something to the effect of, you're happy with the lowest bidder until you see the work. Um, and then you've got to go back and do it again. So uh, we want it done well and done professionally, and that's not always the, the least expensive route to take. But, um, you know, once, once and done is kind of my philosophy. Uh, a few other tidbits I can throw out, and then we'll take whatever questions you might have. The drum booth will probably go away. Um, we'll have to figure out some other way to sort of lower the sound of the drums, but we think that the, the look of the drum booth has had its, has had its day. Uh, the drum aquarium, as it might be lovingly referred to. Um, we've had lots of the space pod. It's had lots of names over the years. Um, if you have really good eyes, you can see this ugly little rectangular box above the organ pipes. That is not part of the organ. That's part to do with HVAC. We're trying to figure out what to do. We can take that out. Um, trying to think of other things. Uh, Nancy mentioned these six speakers in the ceiling, um, but these hung speakers are what you're hearing us through right now. Those have collected dirt and dust over the last um, six, seven years, and so those would be cleaned and not look as as dirty anymore. I'll we'll take questions, but anything else I'm forgetting or you want to add that we sort of left out? Can't think of anything right now, but okay. any questions? Okay. Not. It's a big room, so if you're going to ask a question, I'm going to ask you to shout it nice and loud. So, John, you first. Nancy, you mentioned at the beginning the good news or the bad news, but I don't remember if you ever got around to say what the bad news Oh, yeah. What's the bad news? Well, the <laughs> bad news is how much all this is going to oh. cost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, can I kind of hack yeah. out my other question, which is, what are we going to do about the sound system? That's a Jamie what specific, question. What specifically about the sound system, John? Well, there are certain places in, within this room mm -hmm. that people cannot hear. Yeah. And You're one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We okay. Hear you in the choir. Yeah. Well, that's it's a complicated answer. This room has about six rooms inside of it. Uh, each transept is a different room. Depending on where you're sitting in the pews is a different room. The balcony is a different room, and the platform is a different room. My suspicion is our new sound engineer has forgotten to turn the choir monitors on, um, so that might be what you guys are experiencing. So I'll track that down. Send me an email so I don't forget. All right, let's go with uh, Marilyn. We'll go men, men and women. We'll alternate. Marilyn. Uh, nowhere. I haven't, you haven't said anywhere about the baptismal pool that's under the uh, uh, mm. altar. Yes. And I know that that didn't work when we needed Virginia yeah. baptized. So why, why is that missing from your capital? Thank you, Marilyn. Mar if you didn't hear that, Marilyn asked about the baptismal pool. If you're new to Troy, you might not know that underneath, if we move the table, the Lord's table away, underneath the stage uh, in the 80s, I want to say, was installed a, a baptismal pool. Um, it has now uh, died, and to, re to fix it would be incredibly expensive. And so when we do immersion baptisms now, once or twice a year at most, we now have a portable uh, tank that we'll put here. So the horse trough, the horse trough as we lovingly <laughs> refer to it, the, the Lord's horse trough. If the Jordan River worked, a horse trough will be just fine. So... Um, Marilyn, I am sorry. Yeah, the, the old baptismal pool will probably never see the light of day again. So you're not no, ma'am. Yeah. Okay, Garth, you had a question. Uh, well, you mentioned some things that would seem to me to cause major disruptions for Sunday worship, moving the pews aside, maybe having various scaffolding or other devices here. So, what's the plan for that? Yep. Garth asked about. If there's disruption on Sunday mornings, what do we do? So there may be some, there will be some Sundays where we are in here with some sort of part in our dust uh, things, but there may be some Sundays when we, we have our, our 10 o'clock service outside and we'll still have our 745 service in the chapel and we'd add like a 5 p.m. in the chapel. Um, so we would aim to be in here as much as possible, but if it's just not possible, we would expand our chapel offerings and have an outdoor service, which... I miss the outdoor services, so I wouldn't mind a few Sundays of being able to do that again. Tina? Are you going to reinforce the floor? Because when somebody either heavily walks down the floor, the kids do their, their mm -hmm. dancing, mm -hmm. uh, the place shakes. 
asking about reinforcing. Are, are you talking about right the, oh, here. Right here. No, we weren't planning to reinforce. Oh, the, she was asking uh, about when the floor shakes, when the dancers or somebody is um, doing heavy steps on this area. And I, I don't know the answer to this, Tina, but um, I suspect it shakes for a good reason and not a bad reason. You know, sometimes uh, when there's an understory, uh, it's, it's meant to have movement, um, just as, for example, in an earthquake, sometimes a building has that shift in it. Um, I haven't had anybody um, in the contractor world talk about that, so I could certainly ask. But I will add one more thing. As, as we had the flooring tested for asbestos, this just jogged my memory, we also hired a structural engineer to see if taking out anything in the narthex would be of harm to the balcony. And that was another, praise God, no. We can move things around out there, and it, is not, it does not disturb the structural integrity of the balcony. Ken had a question. No, I just want to point out the deflection of the floor is a function of the span. Okay. You're not going to change that. Okay. Thank you. That's what I thought, but uh, I didn't Bruce. have those words. He's, uh, I'm so sorry, you guys. The, you said the, the movement of the room is a product of the span of the room. Of the span of the floor. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bruce. Um, you're talking about the cost. Uh, you, and you mentioned we have, basically we're here for, hopefully for more than, at least for number 14 years mm -hmm. or for longer. Yes. That means basically we have permission to use this building. Yes. Legally, do we have right to make changes to it? Or do we have to go run that path? Yes, that? because so part of our, owns the building. absolutely. Bruce asked about, do we have the permission to change this room? And uh, yes, absolutely, because this is part of the care and upkeep okay. of the property. And yeah, if we, hypothetically, if we were to say, you know, we want to change the orientation of the room, something like that, wildly, we'd need their permission. Well, yeah. for example, when we, a uh, year or two ago, Tom, when we took down part of the chimney over on the Ed building, we did have to contact the EDV to ask if it was okay to do that. Um, and and when, when the pew cushions failed, we, we took the pew cushions out during COVID and then went to put them back and realized they were all disintegrated inside. It was powder, like, uh, it was sort of like one of these sci-fi movies when somebody turns to powder, you know? Uh, we, at, before we threw them away, we had to get permission, uh, but this would be a case of uh, care and upkeep. I've already gotten you, Tina, once. I'll come back to you, but Tim? My, my preference would be for carpet, but I told Nancy yesterday I'm persuadable. Um, but the pew cushions, once we get them, would more than make up for, you know, once we get padded pew cushions back in here, the amount of sound absorption they provide uh, would be substantial and helpful. And just to answer that a little uh, more deeply, any product that we decide to put, especially on these areas where the baby elephants come in right before communion, um, <laughs> is going to be sound absorbing. We are not going to put down something that you're going to hear the click clack of heels or the stomp of little feet. So that's definitely a big consideration. I keep going to this side. Let me call my, my uh, wonderful Oma. That's your question. Uh, I have heard you talk about the possibility of tiles or stuff like that. Um, the church I just came from had the church also renewed uh, with flooring. And there is a huge difference in the sound of tile. Some tile you can walk over it, and it makes a lot of noise, which would not be nice if the dancers are walking in. Other tiles are very, very quiet, but it needs to be tied out. I would hate to see uh, noisy tiles put down because it's too expensive. So if we put down tiles, let's check it ahead of time for the dance. <laughs> Thank you. So I think there is a, a actual rating on that with some of the tiles, and we have a sample of one of them here. I'll leave it up here when we're done tonight so people can come up and just, just tap on it and see what, what you think about the noise. Let's go for five more minutes unless we're, we're done sooner. Uh, who is that? Is that Annette back there? Hi, Annette. So in the picture that we saw of the church in, in Raleigh, yeah. 
Yeah. We're staying with the pews. My feeling there is that Truro's been through enough upheaval in the past few years. Let's not, <laughs> let's not do any more. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, who did I ignore? Was it Jim? Jim Cantwell. Okay. Okay. Yeah. The, the hope and prayer is that we can start signing contracts by the end of this month, and then a large part of it will depend on when people are available. But as Nancy said, the first thing would need to be the paint, and then the flooring, and then the pew cushions. Once we place your order, they would take three to four months to finish. So hypothetically, if we ordered them beginning of June, we would have them by, you know, around September or so. And um, the, the pew cushions and the kneelers are really the very last part of that, this. Um, that will happen when everything else has been completed. And so there will be a phase, um, but I would anticipate that we will have a few Sundays out of the sanctuary, probably in August. Vicki had a question. Oh, and then Connie. My altar guild. Well, Praise I have, God. I have two questions. Yes. First, I, I'm sorry I stepped out, but mm. are you pulling up all of the existing floors? Yes. As best we can tell, under the carpet and under the tile is concrete. And I would now, add that, that could change when we start to dig all this up, but in the testing for the asbestos, that was what we found as we started to move things around and pull things up. And I'd add, instead of us presenting to you what we think is the lowest possible cost, we're trying to present to you what is the kind of the worst case scenario, highest, well, depending on things like that. Right, uh -oh, right. Happened. So our budget is hopefully uh-oh inclusive. Yeah. The other thing, you mentioned painting and then cleaning. Are mm -hmm. we going to have to deal with that before you paint? Deal with what? That black mold up there. No, it's not mold. It's um, no, it's, it's oily a, dust. like an oily dust. Um, and that the painting includes because there could, there's going to be a lot of things moving back and forth in here with the pews and whatnot and the air diffusers. Um, the painters all included a bid to come back and do touch-ups after everything is finished. So um, that will, there's always a punch list at the end, so that'll need to happen. Okay, I didn't hear you mention anything about the bathrooms. Mm -hmm. Not at this point. That would need to be a 2025 budget question or 26. Connie? Could you expand a little more on the modifications to the narthex? Maybe, I would say if you're interested in that, maybe when this is over, let's just go into the narthex. You can see it. Uh, the first thing that's when you first walk in, there's that closet right there. That is not load bearing, that could come out. But this usher's closet has the fuse box and a sink in it, so it would need to stay. I'm not explaining it well. Maybe let's go into the narthex and... Well, Tom's got a question, and I think uh, Carl's got Tom a question. Tom Jimmy. Is this part of that? Is that to create more space? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I felt like um, during the cold winter months, every time I try and exit the narthex, you know, on a Sunday morning, I'm like, I'm going to get a cold from somebody because I'm on top of these people. So it's just, uh, that has needed to be more open for years. Um, it's just a, it's a bottleneck there. And anything that we can do that's within reason to open that space up, we will try to do. Steve. Okay, Steve. Carl. <laughs> Sorry, I'm blinded by the light. Just okay. Let's go to Steve first. <laughs> Sorry. Is this going to require city inspection? City of Fairfax Our understanding is that the only thing that will involve inspection is the narthex, possibly. Okay. It involves a structural change, but not in here. Right. Is there anyone else? Just shout out your question because it's. Did you think of replacing the windows? The. Did you think of replacing the windows? We've not addressed that this year. Is the cost of it would bring the cost up. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they probably at some point they'll need to be replaced, but windows and doors mm -hmm. are a project mm -hmm. that we should have on consideration for until it's done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Steve. One color. That's still open to debate. I don't, I don't think it's a debate in Jamie's mind, but it is for Elizabeth and me. You would say one color, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think the, the brighter white is mm. kind of what we've landed on. And I've just wondered about some of these trim elements, but that's not my forte. <laughs> okay. Jamie, yes, let's do a couple more. Yeah, the squeaky floor, hopefully we can fix that. Let me take one more, one more question. Anybody else have one last question? Make it a doozy. Make it a good, make it a good question. What does one thought Connie. as you remove a lot of the carpet yeah. and stuff is that I think in bad weather, you have to then worry about and consider slips and falls. Oh, yeah. Especially not having carpet going downstairs. You come in from outside and you go immediately down steps with wet feet. Well, whatever we land on for flooring, safety and sound will be two of the top priorities. It might be that in the coming months, as we begin to settle on this, it, whether it's after another dinner, we can begin to show you samples and get your opinions and your input. This is not going to be kind of a top down. Uh, this will be a continuing conversation. We want to at least start it tonight, give you an update because you've given so generously and you've been interested. It's 747. I'm going to, oh, did Mary Spoon have a question? Then I'll pray us out. I don't want to ever, ever ignore Mary Springman when she has a question. It's a budget question. Yeah. Um, do you feel like if you do this in more than one phase that costs will go up and it would be yes. actually better to do it in one phase? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And if we came back a year from now, the flooring could be 115 k yeah. So, yeah. so is there a possibility of um, reserves? Being that would be if you could pray for even the finance committee meeting that starts in 12 minutes uh, as we discern the Lord's leading on that. I'm going to pray us out and then I'll be here for 12 more minutes and then I have an 8 o'clock meeting and Nancy will be here until midnight. You can ask her anything, <laughs> anything you want. Let me pray for us. God, thank you again for this uh, sacred place and for those who've gone before. Lord, it's hard to even uh, comprehend. Thank you, God. And Lord, we just we submit all this to you. Uh, Lord, that this would be led by you, that we would be in agreement uh, or just have healthy disagreement. And Lord, that this would result in this space just being even more beautiful uh, for your beautiful name, more welcoming for those who are coming, those who will come. Uh, Lord, we'd be good stewards of this space for as long as we have it. Uh, Lord, give us wisdom as a church. Uh, give us unity. And Lord, we just pray a fresh blessing over this room. Uh, this would be a place of worship, a place of fellowship, a place of conviction, a holy, solemn place, a place of celebration. Lord, thank you for Nancy, all the hard work that this represents, and for all those who have worked and given. Uh, Lord, please bless this sanctuary as you already have. Continue to fill it with your presence, we ask in your name. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.